So let's go ahead and see what the data would look like. So say we have a cuvette filled with ligand and we titrate into that receptor and we add, we increase the concentration of the receptor with each titration by 10 micromolar. So seen here in the left hand, uh, left hand side of uh, these data. So we take a spectrum for each time after each addition of receptor and the spectrum would look like what we what I showed on the prior slide and we get a maximum maximum absorbance at 545 nanometers. So those maxima maxima are shown here. Then we can go ahead and take these data and we can plot them out. So we'll plot absorbance at 545 nanometers versus the concentration of the receptor added. So these data represent your secondary plot of the primary data. The primary data are the spectra that we got each time we added uh, a different aliquot, uh, an additional aliquot of receptor. So the, the primary data are the spectra that we showed on the prior page. The Secondary data then are the plots of the maximum observance at 545 versus receptor concentration. So in other words, we add receptor to ligand. Every time we add it, some of the ligand binds to the receptor. When it binds, it absorbs at 545 and our absorbance goes up. Now, let's blow that up a little bit. Let's blow up that, that chart. And you can see that there are three regions um, that uh, three regions in this chart. There are two linear regions up here where it flattens out. There's a linear region initially here, and then there's a curved region in the middle. Okay? So what's happening in these regions? Well, in region A, we're adding receptor to the ligand. The ligand was already in our cuvette in the spectrophotometer in solution. We add the receptor little by little, and there's so much more ligand than there is receptor, all the receptor gets bound. Okay, so for any receptor bound, all of it gets added. You basically have zero receptor free in solution. So remember to calculate KD, you need free receptor, free ligand, and the concentration of the ligand receptor complex. Here, the receptor is zero, can't really do the calculation. Look at the other linear region up at, up at region B, that's flat. And at that, that point, we've added so much receptor that all the ligand is bound. So if we add more receptor, our absorbance doesn't go up because we've already bound all the ligand that's in the cuvette. Okay? So in that case, our free ligand concentration is zero. So we can't do the calculation up in that region either. What we need are the concentrations in region C because any of those can be used to calculate KD. Okay? So we want to get concentrations in that curved region to calculate KD. And you're going to do a problem like this in your pre-lab assignment. Okay? So all you have to do, remembering back to uh, our, when we started the simple example, all you have to do is use the extinction coefficient, which will be given in the pre-lab assignment. Use the extinction coefficient and the absorbance and the path length of one centimeter to back into the concentration at any one of those points. And if you get the concentration then of the ligand receptor complex and you know how much your initial concentration of ligand was in your cuvette, we'll give you that. And if you know how much receptor you added, which you know from the x-axis here, you can back into the free receptor and the free ligand. You'll have the receptor ligand complex. You have everything you need to calculate the KD. So that's how you do it. Pick one of the points on the curved part of the plot. Use the extinction coefficient, calculate the concentration of the complex, and then use the concentration of the complex to get the concentrations of unbound ligand and unbound receptor. And that's all there is to it. Okay? So nice simple example of how you might calculate KD. Okay? It's going to get more complicated. We'll talk about that when we get together in person. Let's go on and look at the, our actual lab experiment. And here's here are the players. In our case, the ligand is going to be neutral red. Okay, show you a picture of that in just a minute. 
Our riboflavin binding protein is the receptor. Okay, this is a protein that binds riboflavin, which is vitamin B2, and delivers it to various locations in the body. In this case, we, as we discussed earlier, we need a method of determining the concentration of the complex, or when they're bound together. In this case, we're using absorbance of visible light at 545 nanometers, just like in our example. This is a, just a comparison of riboflavin to neutral red. So you note the three-ring structure of riboflavin. It's that three-ring structure that binds to riboflavin binding protein. So in our case, we use neutral red, which has a similar three-ring structure and also binds riboflavin binding protein. The nice thing is when this is bound, it gives a nice peak at a nice absorbance at 545 nanometers in the visible light region. So that's why we use neutral red. Okay, so in our experiment, we're going to get, take a spectrum on a spectrophotometer from 400 to 700 nanometers. The complex absorbs at 545 nanometers. We're going to titrate the riboflavin binding protein 10 microliters at a time into a solution of neutral red. So we put neutral red solution in the cuvette, titrated binding, riboflavin binding protein 10 microliters at a time. Let's go over to the lab and we'll show you what that looks like. Okay, we're here in the lab ready to do the experiment, and Marie's going to demonstrate the experiment in a minute. But we've got the spectrophotometer all set up to go. We're going to do a trace from 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. We've got our two solutions. We've got ribosome binding protein, and if you can get a close-up of this, you can see that label, nicely labeled, what's in it, the pH, uh, the concentration, initials of who made it, and the date it was made. So nicely labeled tube there. Here's our solution of neutral red, and we've already diluted that down in our cuvette. Remember now, the cuvette goes in the spectrophotometer, so the light goes through the cloudy side of the cuvette, if you can get that. All right, so the light's going to go this way, so be sure you put it in the, the spectrophotometer in the right direction. So, we're all ready to go, and we'll have Marie demonstrate the experiment. I'm taking 10 microliters of the riboflavin binding protein and putting it in the neutral red solution. Now I'm going to mix it with the parafilm and put it in the spectrophotometer. And press start. Okay, so we're back from the lab, and that's really it. We're going to keep titrating in 10 microliters at a time, just like Marie showed, until the absorbance doesn't increase. Okay, so at that point, we know all the ligand in the cuvette is going to be bound with riboflavin binding protein. Absorbance doesn't increase, and we can stop. We've got our primary data we need for doing our experiment. Okay, and the pre lab in person uh, will talk about how to use that data to. Um, calculate KD. It's going to be a little more complicated than our simple example here. Hopefully after the simple example you've got KD down, you understand it, got a pretty good feel for what's going on, so don't forget to do that pre-lab assignment. Hopefully that'll cement this in your mind and the lab will be easy from here. So thanks for listening. See you in the pre-lab. And finally I want to say thanks to Marie Helmy for her great acting in the lab video.